come to God's house. Song number 19, let's stand together, please. Song number 19, like a river glorious is God's perfect peace. Let's sing it together on the first lifted up. Like a We welcome you to church this first Sunday of April, and we're looking forward to a great day in the Lord's house together. We have still numbers of guests here. Some are coming in for the uh, college days, Monday and Tuesday here at Golden State, and we're excited about that. And we still have a few missionaries here from Rock of Ages meeting this week, and we welcome you as well. I saw Brother Edelman here from Chico, and his girls, Rebecca and Sarah, we're honored to have you here. Of course, Mrs. Freeman, we've mentioned you, and grateful to have you and your girls here this morning. 
And uh, there's others around uh, this morning. We're grateful to have you here. Brother Justin Cooper, I saw you in here somewhere. And uh, grateful to have you here today as well and be pre preaching in College Chapel Monday and Tuesday. But uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Welcome our online guests. And we're looking forward to a great day in God's house. Let's pray and commit this service to our Lord and Savior. Our Father, what a joy it is to be here with your people gathered together. And Father, we want to be stayed upon Jehovah. Lord, every day of our life, every moment of every day. But God, I pray for your touch upon this service. May we be focused and stayed upon thee, every congregational, every special, the choir number. And then, Father, as we come to the preaching of your word, I pray, God, that you would speak deeply to our hearts. May we learn to die to self, and may we be filled with thy spirit. And I pray, God, that you do a great work and draw the lost to salvation. May Christ be magnified with all that takes place, for we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Savior. How about page number 36, please? Page number 36. The wonder of it all, just to think that God loves you and me. Page number 36 as the choir joins us at sing the first now. There's a wonder of sunset.
cheer the heart like Jesus. Empire, His presence all divine. Page to the light, sing it out. True and tender and precious. Oh, how blessed to call. How about that second verse on the second verse? Thank you so much for being in God's house this morning. It's good to see every single one of you in the filled auditorium. And we have a visitor pack in. Visitors, thank you for being with us. And ushers, if you would come with that visitor, it's just a brochure. It gives them information about our ministry and all the things in the history of our church. And if you're visiting with us for the very first time, if you wouldn't mind just flagging down one of those ushers, and we just want to get you some information. There's also a card in the back. If you could fill that out, that would help us. And as they're doing that, I also want to welcome our B ministry and C ministry, junior and teen department. They're over here in the balcony, our C ministry up there. And then our B ministry over here. And thank you so much for being in the auditorium and I greatly appreciate all of our bus riders and the people coming but I like it when our uh, teen and junior department gets to come in here because then I get to watch my kids 
as they're up there. And I see you guys in the front row over there. And uh, even Joe's birthday today. Happy birthday, Joe. And it's just going to be a great time together that we have. And thank you, Bus Kids, for being here in our auditorium service. Ushers, if we can come through with the bulletin, raise your hand if we've missed you with the bulletin. And we want to get you all the various announcements. We'll really cover them tonight at 6 o'clock, the evening service. And we're looking forward to being back. We obviously have choir practice and all the things heading up to the service. But it's going to be a great time together tonight at 6 p.m. Let's make sure we're in our spot. I've come too far to look back again. There is nothing behind me. All the treasures I used to love have all faded from view. There's a new day ahead for me. All my heartache is over. far to look back look around there's unhappiness some see no reason for living life will give you a broken dream full of heartache and fear turn around don't look back again face the new day before you place your heartache in Jesus hand he can mend broken dreams I've come too far to look back my feet have walked through the valley I've climbed mountains, crossed rivers, desert places I've known. But I'm nearing the home shore, and the redeemed are rejoicing. Heaven's angels are singing. I've come too far. at you here today and what a great crowd i still rejoice over last sunday easter and thank you for your tremendous involvement bus kids up there once a month you come in here i wish it was every week i love having you and you know um our bus kids are just amazing they listen they respond they wait and i'm excited to have you all here and uh, maybe right after the offering if we could get a cameraman somewhere up here uh we'll stand for the scripture after the offering brother Fernero read it i'd like to get a a picture of all that up there just sort of uh on the video screen so you could see it as well on the lower floor while we're here the other property literally is spanish is exploding that ministry there and the sea ministry over there and classes are here been refilled and we're so very thankful that all that god has done I, um, I was reading in my Bible time this morning as we prepare for the offering. I was reading over here in uh, 2 Corinthians. 
And uh, Paul said something very interesting. He said, forgive me for this wrong. Forgive me for this wrong. Here, the Apostle Paul was asking forgiveness to these ch this church. The problem was in chapter 11, in verse 13, he said, I've robbed other churches for your sake. In other words, the church at, at Corinth did not have a financial vested uh, investment in the work of God. And they said, I've tried to take a pressure off you, but really, I've caused you to miss a blessing. When I was uh, very young here, 48 years ago at the church, an older pastor, I don't remember right now who it was, but he's with the Lord, I know. And he, um, he said, I said, you know, I have a hard time receiving the offering. Uh, it's difficult because I feel like, uh, it, it, you know, I don't want to be looked at as a charlatan. And I don't, a lot of TV evangelists were raising money that, those days. He said, Brother Treber, you're going to have to learn getting people to give is not what you do to them. It's what you allow for them. We get to invest in heaven. And uh, we have found through the years where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I recall many, many years ago, a man, he and his wife were both with the Lord. He'd come, and you've heard this so many times, he'd come for two weeks, always walk the aisle, very dignified man, get right with God, and then he'd be faithful for a week or two, and then he'd miss for three weeks, and back and forth. And he came forward at the invitation, and I'll never forget, just dignified, business-type man, executive-looking man, much older than I, and he came to the invitation, and I, he said, I don't know why. I start, I stop, I start, I stop, I'm in, I'm out. I'm so frustrated. I don't know why I said this, but I looked at him, and I don't go down here anymore, but I, it's like I used to. But he said to me, I don't know why. I said, I know why, and I called him by his name. I said, you don't tithe. And I'll never forget, he looked, and he said, I thought you never looked at the offering. I said, I don't have any idea. But if you put your treasure somewhere, you're going to put, you put your investment, you're going to look where your treasure is going. And it helped me so much. And uh, we have opportunities to invest everything that I own in life. I, I drive a church car. It's going to burn up one day, the Bible says. It's all going to be destroyed. This planet will be destroyed. Climate people think they, they got a heat wave coming. There's a heat wave coming. This whole earth is going to blow up and burn up one day according to God, and it's going to be God's, God's command, says it. Everything I own is going to, but Ms. Treber and I have enjoyed sending up a lot up there. And I'm looking forward to investing in the work of the Lord. Brother Cooper, I finally found you. I, I've been looking everywhere. We're, he'll be preaching college days the next two days. We're excited about that. Brother Aaron Edelman, I haven't seen you. You, you remember here years ago, and uh, you got your twins there. God bless you. Good to have you with us today. And um, throughout the house, Sister Pe Peggy Ellis, you're with uh, Mrs. Whitlow there, Mrs. Roth, we're glad. But your husband preached Wednesday. That service was one of the most very special we've ever had. And what they do with prison ministries. Her husband went back to jail today. And, and brother, brother Whitlow is back in jail today because they just had a weekend. They, they had a week pass, not a weekend pass. They, uh, they are preachers. And uh, all over the country, you Brazilian people, they just, they just built a brand new big church in Brazil. You need to maybe talk to Mrs. Ellis. Our Brazilian folks are sitting here. We began a new class out of our class today. Brother Ramers, who just sang, is in charge of our class. But he took about 14 people, I think, out today. And we had a few that always come. We're missing today. And uh, with Brother Thiago interpreting, we have the Brazilian Bible class. And if you come to church, I get nothing out of church. Some of these people don't speak English, but they come every week. Yeah. They sit right here. And I am so glad. I, I, I wish I could squeeze you all. I love the Brazilian people. God's going to do with Brother Tiago and Natalia and Brother Mrs. Ramp big things at that class. 14-week foundation class. So come back, and we're going to have another foundations class in the future for another group. And bus kids again. I'm just so thankful for you. A lot of good life ahead of you. We're in the book of Colossians. We won't turn there now, but Brother 
Brother Fenero will read the scripture this morning after the offering. Ushers come, and we're making our way through the book of Colossians. Remember, it's a city, a Jerry uh, Dill, right over here. Jerry, raise your hand. He lived there in Turkey. This is an area in Turkey, and he says, I'm telling the truth about it all. Colossae is underground. You can't see it, but you see remnants of it. The church began to merge with the gods of the day, the god of Cynthia, the god of Zeus, the goddess um, Nike, and all these gods began to infiltrate the church. And the church is called out of that ecclesia. We're a called out body, and we need to stay clean before God in our theology. And so today I look forward to picking it up in chapter 3, verse 5. Our Father, thank you for the privilege to give. Bless these gifts as we give back to thee. In Jesus' name, amen. turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 3 is where we'll be this morning. And once you've found your place, if you would stand with me for the reading of God's Word, we will be reading beginning in verse 5 and going through verse 14. I will begin by reading the odd verses and ask that you would read out loud the even verses beginning in verse 6 and going through verse 14. Colossians chapter 3, I'll begin in verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. In the which ye also walked some time, when ye lived in them. one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Bearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Let's pray together this morning. God, we do thank you so much that we can be in your house. Lord, to be able to sing songs that lift up your holy name in worship. 
God, I thank you that we have the freedom to gather as we do today, and I thank you for all those who made it a point and a priority to be in your house. God, we ask now for the preaching of your word. We ask that you would anoint our pastor, that you would give him strength and power. God, I pray that you would speak through him in a mighty way, and I pray that we would have hearts to receive your word, to allow it to do a great work in our lives, that we may be changed more in your image. We ask your blessing, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, you may be seated. As you're seated, one last announcement, actually two last announcements. Check the President's Club, make sure we have your names right. This is the last day for that, and we'll make sure that the, for our plaque is correct. In your bulletin today, I was in a hotel a couple months ago uh, in preaching out of town, and I got thinking about the books of the Bible and how many chapters there are. And I've asked someone, maybe I hope I can explain this where it's not your ability not to understand, to understand it's my ability to explain it. Uh, choose your age there. Let's say you're 66 years of age. Maybe you could go to Isaiah and either claim chapter 66 or the entire book of uh, Isaiah this year and uh, read through it. Perhaps you're 31 years of age. There's Proverbs, there's 31, 1 Samuel, or find some verses in there. Perhaps you're a teenager, you're 13. We have Nehemiah and Hebrews and Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians. Uh, you can find it, and if you're 66, you don't have to, or 67, you don't have to read your Bible anymore, apparently, because there's nothing like that. Uh, so I, I hope that you, I, I hope I explained that correctly. It's kind of confusing. I was telling the secretary, I thought, oh boy, I just, I, I don't know. So I, what it, choose your age and uh, choose a chapter and whatever it is. There are some that are less than that, but one, but I don't think a one-year-old is going to read his Bible that very much. Did we get the picture of that whole crowd, Brother Moyer? We're going to try it again uh, at the close of service before you dismiss out bus kids. I'll put the cameraman here because I want to get that, that sea of young people up there. I, I certainly appreciate uh, all of you today. As I mentioned earlier here in Colossians 3, the, the problem with the church, and I'll tell you, I've, I've enjoyed Colossians. I'm ashamed to tell you, it was never my favorite book. Uh, my favorite book is Philippians. And maybe it's because Philippians is very remedial. It's not deep theology. And uh, I loved it. But Colossians, I know my wife for many years, her favorite text was Colossians chapter 1. This is our church verse. We chose it in 1976. It's Colossians 1.18. I love the chapter. I love many chapters, but the theology, I think sometimes, I'm afraid to say, ashamed to say this, it scared me a little bit, frightened me. And I said, I'm going to conquer this book. And I did everything for a month or two just studying the heritage. Before I even, I just studied where it was. I got a map out and studied. I read about the city and read about the area. I read how far it was from Ephesus and how it, it was a, 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 a city that was given over to wool and to dye. And then they'd take that about 120 miles and cart it to Ephesus, the seaport. And, and then they'd get it out and became very uh, very wealthy city. But the problem is, though commerce was wealthy, the church lost its focus. And please hear me, when a church loses her focus, the country loses its focus. Amen. Like people, like priests. The people become like the leadership. And, and what we, we have done, it's just amazing how, Brother Cooper, you could talk about this. You, you've traveled the country. We're closing down churches on Sunday night all over America. 385,000 churches and most are closed on Sunday night. No wonder why our country now has over 40 days a year given to sodomy. Recognizing sodomy, over 40, including our president last, year, last week, that he, he Easter as transvestite day. What a blasphemy. Hey, you try that, you try that to the Muslim church. Huh? That was disrespectful to our God. And I'll tell you what, that's not going unnoticed by God. Well, why doesn't God deal with it? Uh, God will. Yes, sir. The wheels of mercy run very slow. Yes, sir. God's going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. You cannot continue to blaspheme God and say man and man are the same as man and woman. That's blasphemy. God says in the last days, Romans, that men will burn in their lust for men and women for women. That's against God's institution. 
Jesus created male and female. I, you say, you know you're in California. I know where I'm at. I haven't lost my mind yet. I know I'm in the Silicon Valley. But God's word is still God's word. And when a church loses their focus, what, what, what you did last weekend, nearly 9,000 people reaching people for Christ. That's, that's our mission, to get the gospel, singing hymns, Brother Romero, sing, hymns and songs and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to God. Amen. House to house, door to door, Amen. giving the good news, rescuing the perishing, going to the prisons, going to, to reach everybody, red, yellow, black, brown, white, they're all precious in his sight. Amen. He's not willing that any should perish. That's why we want the Brazilians here. God, we love the Brazilians. We have the Hispanics. We have the Indian ministry. We have the Filipino ministry. Well, we have a couple people in the white ministry. <laughs> hey, I love them all. Amen. My son, Brother Tim, pastors in Arizona, he says, Dad, he was here visiting. He said, the thing I miss probably the most, my church is basically Caucasian. I miss seeing all the groups. I grew up, he said, with the Filipinos. Best man at his wedding was a Filipino. He said, I grew up with the Hispanics. I grew up with the, we've got Vietnam and Vietnamese in here. We have about 90 different countries represented all the time in our church. I love that. That's how it was in Acts chapter 2, by the way, chapter 1. I love reaching the multitudes. God's brought us the mission field. And so with that in mind, we see, we get to chapter, we, we, we saw verse 1, 2, and 3, and 4 uh, a week ago. But verse 5, the Bible says, mortify. Mortify. Your members which are upon the earth. He, he said the problem with this church, look at chapter 2, verse 23, the latter part. To the satisfying of the flesh. These, these Colossians satisfied the flesh. And, and if you'll know historically, when you begin to worship the gods, there are always gods of immorality. You kill somebody, you're going to get 70 virgins when you go to heaven. That's one religion. You kill people, you get to go to heaven. And now you have said that the, the, the false gods deal with the, the lustful craving, uh, craving of sensuality. And today this church was having that. They, they were given, and we're seeing the scripture in the moment. They, they wanted to satisfy my flesh. It's all about me. I've got to be happy. I don't care if I hurt my children. I don't care if I hurt my wife. I don't care if I hurt my husband. I don't care who I, I have to be happy. Why don't you not only grow up, but why don't we become Christian? Amen. It's not about you being happy. It's you taking responsibility. If you're going to, if you're going to say, ah, this week we'll have a wedding here and the, the wonderful, beautiful bride and the handsome, handsome groom, they are going to commit themselves to one another for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health. That's what it's all about. Marriage is not riches, happiness, ha, fun, Disneyland, going here, going there, I'm having a party, it's the best. Well, guess what? That's not marriage. Marriage is sorrows and weeping and children getting sick and hospitals and, 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 and marriage is, is being close to one another as you lay to rest your mother or your dad or your sibling or whatever it may be in life. Marriage is not always easy, but it's, marriage is right. I would that all men marry, Paul says. Everyone gets married. It's a wonderful thing. And yet we live in a society now because of sin, marriage is out. The scripture today it reminds us there's an old man and there's a new man. I got saved many, many years ago. When I got saved, I still had a, I have a new man that wants to do right because the Holy Spirit lives with me and he tells me, don't do that, Jack. No, don't. Uh, don't do that. Don't say that. And he always convicts me, that's the new man. And the old man says, I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. You've been in this church any length of time. You've heard this illustration a hundred times, but it's such a perfect one. The Indian chief got saved. 
the missionary led him to Christ, and he went back up the river to go to other, other places to reach other Indians for Christ, and he came back down, and he saw the Indian chief some months later, and he said, Chief, how you doing? He said, big war inside. He goes, what do you mean, big war inside? He said, one dog, two dog. One dog wants to do wrong, right? One dog wants to do right. And he said, well, who wins? He goes, the one I feed the most. The chief got it. You feed your flesh and you're going to reap and I am going to reap the consequences of the flesh. Young people, yes, life is hard, but right, do, uh, with a songwriter, he's with the Lord now. Do right till the stars start. Just do right. Right is always right and wrong is always wrong. Amen. And this text today, we're going to see it. The old man, the new man, the, the carnal man, and the spiritual man. Our flesh craves to do wrong. We crave to lie. The report is out 90, what is it, 95% claim that they lie on a regular basis to those that are closest to them. Children often lie, parents lie, we lie to one another, we lie, but, but our, our flesh wants to lie, our flesh, our flesh wants to steal, our flesh wants to be in, immoral, our flesh, 70% of Americans today have given themselves over to pornography. If that's true, report just came out this week, 70%. If I had 70% of this church stand up and the fastest growing group of pornography lovers is women. I'm going to tell you something. There's no such thing as being a good pastor, a good father, a good Christian, a good mother, a good child with pornography. And kids, you're going to start putting things in your mind at an early age, and they will, they will tempt you, they will try you, they will test you all the days of your life. I heard a preacher say one time that he said, I, I looked up and there was a, a, a picture of something very nasty and nudity and I looked up and he said, I turned it away and he said, I want to tell you something. I can't be responsible for the first look when it's just right there, but I can be responsible for the second. I don't believe it's possible to raise good kids with these cell phones. Age 12 to 27 is the Z generation. The Z generation says we don't want to work we don't want a job. We do not want responsibility. We want things given to us. And we are living in a government that they just keep handing out for everything. You want a free cell phone? Government will give you one. You want, go, you want money for groceries? We'll give you a little credit card that's free. You won't have to pay for it. You want to go to school and not pay your bill? Well, we'll pay it for you. No, sir. If a man will not work, he should not eat. Amen. That's a Bible. Man will never be fulfilled with violating the word of God. Man must work. Yes. There's fulfillment in work. I'm going to get to my text, but I'm having a good time with this right now. Paul says mortify. Mortify is not horrify. Mortify is what the dentist does to you. Now, we have a dentist in the church, and thank God for the dentist. I led a dentist to Christ years ago, and I tell you what, I said, I'm just shocked you got saved because I don't think a dentist can get saved. <laughs> what they do, they say, they put, they put Brother Floyd, would you sit right there, please? I was going to call on you. What, they, they put a, a, a little smock on you. This is going to be great. And they always say, this won't hurt. I want to tell you, that's why I don't think dentists could, could say it. They lie. It always hurts. I can get by with the lower jaw, but that, oh, the eye teeth. That is, you know what I'm talking about? Dr. May, are you in here? You're barely saved. Yeah, yeah, there you go. God bless you. And they come at you with this big old needle. And they say, and they all say, just a little pinch. That's what they, a little pinch. I said to a, a doctor, just a little pinch, it won't hurt that bad. I said, good, you get here, I'll get there with that needle. You sit here. 
oh, 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 maybe a little bit more than a pinch. I knew he was lying. Put your head back. So they jerked your head back there. <laughs> Open your mouth. Sort of like, go, oh, I got to tell this other story. I went to see this doctor a few years ago, not a dentist, but just a medical doctor. And I didn't know it was going to be a woman. I'm sitting there on the edge of the bed, you know, like this. And the first thing she says, put your shoulders up, sit up straight. <laughs> Welcome to you. I hope you're having a good day too, I said. She said, you want to you get old and be slumped over like that? You want to look like that? Your shoulders rolled in? Sit up straight. I said, have you been talking to my wife? <laughs> Back to mortifying. Teenagers up there, this is your bus cap. I got the needle right here. <laughs> Head back, mouth open. Um, let's get a good picture so his bus kids can see this. <laughs> this is going to come in like it's going to go... It's going to go up through the roof of your mouth, out your nose, back the corner of your eyelid, and then back. It's, it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. Are you ready? I uh, know. Your, your sister's loving this down there, brother. Your mother is against this. Your grandmother's having the time of her life. I'm just glad your grandmother's awake. Um, are you ready? We know what this thing's going to do. What tooth do you want me to take out? Uh, none of them. None, none of them. None of them. You remind me of your little boy right now, Joel. Doesn't he look like Joel? This little weapon here is going to mortify him. What does mortification do? It deadens. It deadens. Did that hurt now? Not yet. It's done. Here's your tooth. Thank you. There you go. All right. Now, I wish I really had a, I was going to borrow. Here's my message today. Let's go to the dentist. I was going to borrow a needle Dr. May from you. And I said, I don't think she's going to want me to do that because she's probably going to be liable when I stick him. That would have been so awesome. It would have been great to bring you up here and mortify him a little bit. Oh, my goodness gracious. Mortify is to deaden. It's my responsibility. You see, my flesh craves to do wrong. My flesh craves to sleep. My, my flesh craves to be lazy. My, my flesh, flesh craves to just have life as a big party. But my flesh has to be denied. I have to say no to the flesh. I, I don't know if you knew, I know I told the men I was preaching from this text, but last, this morning when you opened in prayer, help us to die to the flesh. Die to the flesh. It tells me many things. One, you probably listen at men's prayer. Second, you probably looked up the scripture. Thirdly, God spoke to your heart. I'm to die to my flesh. I, 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 we've had such a good marriage for 51 years, but I tell you what, sometimes my old prideful way, it, it, I wish I'd have sealed my lips sometime. I wish I'd have been quiet sometime. I wish I'd have been not so opinionated at times. Yes, have convictions and have this and that. But, but, but God gave us two ears and one mouth. We ought to listen more than we speak. Mortify, the Bible says, therefore your members. And so as we talk about our, our body today, members are, are, are it, literally our body. All these members must be mortified. Here's what I do in my prayer life. I always... Say, Lord, one of my first prayers every day, I give you my mind. I normally laugh, say, it's not much up there, is there? That's one of my members, my mind. My mind can get overwhelmed with sadness and sorrow and grief and disappointment. It's hopeless. That's why, for me personally, I cannot watch the news. I cannot listen to the news. I don't put on my radio. I don't want to. I gave it up on election day 20, uh, 20, uh, 2020. I said, I don't want to listen to any of this stuff. So well, how do you know what's going on? I listen to people talk. I, I give God my mind. Thou will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. I don't want my mind to think wrong and think evil and thinking, thinking discouragement. It's so easy to get there. My mind. And then God, I want to give you my eyes. I want to give you these eyes so that my eyes would see, open mine eyes that I might see glimpses of the truth that I asked for me. 
I want my eyes open to righteousness. I want to see things that are good. God will give me my ears. I want to hear good things today. I give you my mouth. I want to say good things today. And the attitude in which I say it, I want there to be kindness in my voice. And then God will give you my hands. And God will give you my feet. And God will give you my heart. And God, every day I say, I give you my life. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. And you know what I find out through the day, Brother Reimers? I find out that I, as I've done that, then sometimes during the day, my mind, my eyes, my ears, my mouth might begin to drift away from God in his righteousness and drift back over to the, my flesh. And I need to then say, Lord, please, I, I, I've asked you for a seal on my ears and, and I'm hearing things I need to walk away. I, I'm reading things I should not read. I'm hearing things I should, I, I'm doing things. I, I'm frustrated, I'm upset. That's my flesh. And so I'm going to mortify my members. Now, he begins to tell us what our members are, what our members desire. He said, I want you to know that your, your members desire fornication. Fornication is immoral lifestyles. It's the Greek word pornea. Pornea. Where we get the word pornography. And the word says, you see, in the flesh, it's going to want fornication. It's going to want adultery. It's going to want the printed page, uh, the pictures or whatever. It's going to want that the flesh desires that. Male and female, that's why the greatest growing group right now is women with pornography. We want to see that. The flesh wants to see it. But I'm going to tell you, child of God, you can live a lifetime. I've failed a lot of things, but I've never gone to that site. I've not gone to those. Why? Because I do not want to throw away this ministry and have God's people hurt. Now, you say, well, you're such a per No, I'm not a perfect person. I'm so far away from what I should be. But there's some things I could make a decision. God, my, my wife, my wife's firm on this, has our whole marriage. She said, I think when a man's into pornography, he's already, he's already destroyed his marriage. He's committed adultery with his eyes. You sweet young boys up there, God bless you. You're going to live in a wicked society, but you ought to live without going to websites and, and without going to uh, pictures or wherever you can find these things. You ought to live where one girl comes into your life and it's death to us part. She's my wife. Not all these fake pictures. And girls are watching because apparently, apparently they, they can, uh, what's, uh, What's the word? Uh, Photoshop molds and this stuff and make you all look flawless. And you become, I want to mirror that in my appearance, in my dress. But the danger is you're advertising that you're for sale. So he says fornication. Remember that we said initially these gods you, you study the gods of yesteryear and, and even the gods in these religions, they're always gods that are given over to impurity, physical impurity, fornication. Uh, notice what he says, the second word, inordinate uh, uh, uncleanness. In, uncleanness is just lustful, filthy living. Everything's nasty, everything's dirty, everything is about me. The next word is inordinate affection. That is, I have depraved passions. This is my passion. It's all moral sins. It said yeah, uh, evil cacupsis, which is uh, wide open cravings to satisfy me. That's what that word is. I, I just, it's cravings for me. I need to be happy. I'm gonna do what makes me happy. I'm not happy in my marriage. I'm not happy with my children. I'm not happy with my parents. I'm not happy in life. And so I'm going to satisfy me. And it's an amazing thing how the devil will bring someone by that will try to make you happy. She, men, cannot keep her own husband happy. But she thinks she's going to keep you happy. And you think she's going to keep you happy or vice versa. But the problem is you're going to a trap. It's a trap, the Bible says. 
Today is the seventh day. If you read Proverbs chapter six and seven yesterday and today, it's all about the same things we're talking right now. And it's a snare and it's like a dart that goes through the liver. That is terminal. And then he said, what's the next word? Covetousness. I want more. I want more of this living. I want more sin. Look at verse 6. For which things sake the wrath of God. You see, you live that way, judgment's coming. Well, God's not, God's going to deal with it. Judgment's coming. On the children of disobedience. Well, I know this person deserves it, and this person deserves it. Can I have you look right here? There's a man that deserves more judgment, I think, than any person in this room. It's your pastor. I ought to live, I ought to live like a life like Moses. And it's, such, it's such a godly life that his face to shine in the presence of God. I have a higher responsibility than any in this room. And I know how weak and how frail I am in life. I know through the middle of the night when I'm tossing and turning, and I, I'm ashamed to tell you, I, 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 I get worrying, and I get nervous, and I get uh, sometimes somebody can just say something to me and that thought, I can't get it out all night long. All night long, it keeps coming back to me and back to me. And I get up and I walk with God and I pray. And sometimes I lay back down and God allows me finally to sleep, casting all your care upon him. But sometimes my, my old flesh, brother, ever see, it just worries and worries. Say, that's not right. I know, but you want to just choose the people with adultery and fornication. Because you want to make sure that everybody knows their sin is worse than yours. My sin of worry is worry. Casting all your care upon him. Be anxious. Be worried for nothing. Everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let's stop finding sin with everybody else. People that love to magnify another one's sin is because they're always covering their own. I'm not justifying sin. I'm just saying, as Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. We find fault with people. How oh, they raise their kids wrong. Wait till you raise your kids. We just happen to be blessed. I don't know how, but all six of our kids are in the ministry. Three kids and three in-laws in the ministry. It's just the grace of God. Fourteen kids all in church today. It's the grace of God. 14 grandkids. Well, I know somebody, they, their grandkids don't go to church. I get those prayer requests everywhere I travel. On my emails, I had them, one on my desk this morning. Just, I, I, I read the sorrows of people's lives. I am not going to judge a person how his kids turned out. And I'm not going to stand in judgment of mankind. David said, my sin is ever before me. I can tell you my sin is ever before me. Oh, I don't believe I've done something to disqualify me from being the pastor of this church, but now wait a minute. Let him without sin cast the first stone. Stop thinking you're so perfect, everybody else is so wrong. And I am not justifying sin. So it goes on to say, as we go to the dentist, I want you to put these things off. Number one, verse eight, put, put off Anger. Anger is, we, we think anger is, oh, I'll tell you what. Anger is I'm seeking revenge. I'm going to get even. In your marriage, you're going to have to be careful about revenge. You're going to have to be very careful. A little boy in recent weeks, what was a 13-year-old boy, killed his parents. He was seeking revenge. That's what anger is. Then he says wrath. Wrath is explosions. That's why your little two-year-old that goes shopping with you and wants to get something, and you say no, and they explode, you better check that early in life. Explosions. And then what does he say? Uh, malice. That's having such ill will built up, I'm willing to hurt that person. And then the word blasphemy, I'm going to hurt another person's name. I'm going to hurt their name. Why? 
Uh, and then he says, filthy communication. That's obscene, foul speaking. And then he says in verse number nine, lie not one to another. But he says in verse number eight, now put off. But look what he says in verse 10, put on. And he says in verse 12, put on. Verse 10, put off, put on the new man. Not this old man that we've been reading about, but the new man in the, it, it renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Verse 12, and put on as the elect of God, put on some holiness and bowels of mercy, being kind and kindness and the humbleness of mind and meekness. I have power, but it's under control and so long suffering is just reverse it, suffering long and forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any have a quarrel against another, even as Christ forgave you, so also you forgive him. Let, let's try to finish it up. So we must continually deaden my flesh. We must, as the, you go to the dentist to get Novocaine, I must deaden, I'm responsible to deaden my flesh. How? With the word of God. Here's what the Bible says. Now are ye clean through the word. John 15. You're battling pornania, pornography, adultery with your eyes. You're battling lying. The church can't clean you up. Baptism cannot clean you up, but the Word of God says you're clean through the Word. Amen. So we have to get in the Word of God. Secondly, we get cleaned up through confession. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin, and here it is, cleanse us. And so when I sin against man, or sin against God, or it's between me and God, I worry, I worry, or whatever it might be, a sadness overgrips me, loneliness overgrips me, and all of a sudden I'm just overwhelmed. I don't need to tell that to my wife. I need to tell God. I sin against my wife, I need to tell my wife. Years ago, about 45 years ago, a lady came forward with the invitation. She stayed in our church for about 35 years. And she came and said, Pastor, I want to confess something to you. I've been mad at you for the last year. I wish you had never told me that. I didn't know that. And they were in our church. They were faithful. In fact, the last thing they ever did, she was having some surgery. My wife made a meal. We took her to the house. Next week, they left the church mad. Never told me. She said, no, we're not going to be involved. I thought, what in the world are you doing? I had someone just in the last few weeks said, I just want to let you know for the last many years I've been upset with you. Don't tell me that. I never knew that. That really helped me. That kept me up. Why would they be mad at me? Why are you do what are you doing? But God says to confess to God. I'm going to be clean as I confess to God. You don't have to come to a little room. I'm on this side. You're on that side. You tell me your sins. What can I do with your sins? No one can wash away my sins but Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I need, if I'm going to dead in my flesh, I need a, a word of God. I need to confess. And then uh, 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 it's my Fred Sly verse. I've got to have dependence upon God. Forty years, 35 years ago, he gave me John 15, 5. For without me, you can do nothing. I can't have victory over sin or discouragement or whatever. I can't have victory without realizing he's in charge. He must increase, John 3, 30. I must decrease. Number four, I need to be right with God and with man. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. We have really tried that in our entire marriage. Last thing we do at night is we pray, and I've tried never to pray mad at my wife and vice versa. I hope we've made that. I think we've tried to. I'll tell you this for sure, as she's smiling down there. It's hard to understand women. Women, I'll tell you the problem. I'll tell you the problem right here with women. They don't think like men. <laughs> Start thinking like I think. Well, then you know the truth is, and I'm jesting, we have begun to think a lot similar thoughts because the two have become one. Oh, I'm not saying it's perfect. 
And some of you that think, this woman, I can't live with her. This guy, I can't. God can work that out. And, 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 and we're out of time. I, I want to say, as we go to the dentist, do you remember back in chapter 1, we discovered we were tripart, we're, as God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, a triune God. We're trichotomist. We're three parts. We are, First Thessalonians 5, 23, we are spirit, soul, which is mind, and body. And remember we said that yoga puts the body first, the mind, the mind first. Yoga is all about controlling your mind, dangerous, because the Christian is going to have victory. It first has to be spirit, which is spirituality, right with God. Then the second thing, your mind And then the last thing physiologically is your body. When the body begins to tell the mind what to do and the mind tells the spirit, you're going to have all these sins. Here's what it is. Your mind, your spirit says, walking with God, I don't want that. The illustration where in the morning the alarm goes off if you use an alarm. The alarm goes off, your body says, I'm not getting out of bed. And your body tells your mind, I'm going to stay here. And your mind tells the spirit, I know I'm supposed to walk with you and read your word, but I'm not going to do it today. I'm too tired. We gave way to our body. And that's what this church at at Colossae was doing. It was a great church. And Paul was reminding me, he must have preeminence. But the problem is they wanted their gods and goddesses and God. And they merged them together. My suggestion is this week, let's go to the dentist. Before I have prayers, anybody have a dentist appointment this week? You're good Christians. Not one of us have a dentist appointment this week. And if you go to the dentist with emergency this week, you say to the dentist, male or female, you're going to give me this little pinch, and you're going to tell me it's not going to hurt that much. Let's start with you in the chair first, and I'll do you, and then see how that works. Let's go to the dentist. Mortify yourself. Our Father, I thank you so much for having these teenagers with us, young people today. Thank you for the Brazilian dear people, our guests that are here, our faithful members. This book of Colossians has been such an inspiration to me, such a help. And now we're moving quickly. But I pray as we continue to go through it this year, that God would open up our eyes to righteousness. It's so easy to do wrong. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Report came out this week that one third of all American babies this year, every year, are born out of wedlock. One third of all babies. I think we're a country given over to the lust of the flesh. 70% of all Americans, young and old, into pornography. I think we can all see that condition of our country. Father, save the unsaved today. Those are without Christ who do not know that if they died, they go to heaven. May this be the day of their salvation. Those that want to get right with these, those that want to pray about their family, their loved ones, may they use this altar this morning. With our heads bowed, in a moment we'll stand. Our heads will be bowed. You can come forward. A man will show a man, a lady will show a lady how to be saved. In addition, if you just want to pray about some need in your life, maybe nothing I spoke about today, but something else, would you come? Perhaps you want to come today and uh, get right with God. I I don't know what it is, but I believe God's speaking. With our heads bowed, how many would say, Pastor, God dealt with me personally about something today. Would you raise your hand up all over the house? God's dealing with me today. God's dealing with me. Thank you. Up on the balconies. God bless you. The lower floor. Me too. Let's put our hands down. Father, you see those hands. More than that, you see the hearts. Thank you for these that are willing to admit that we all have needs. And God, may you be the great God that meets those needs today at this invitation. Our heads are bowed quietly. Let's stand together. And will you come forward to pianist place? Pastors will be here. Ladies will be here to help. Come on, would you come? I want to pray about something. I want to be saved. That's it. Come on. Please come. Please come. Let, let's pray. Pray for your children, mothers and dads, my goodness gracious. Pray for your children. 
tonight, Brother and Mrs. Kissel, your son and daughter-in-law, I'd like to have prayer with you at the altar tonight at the invitation. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. God, yeah, that's it. God bless you, sir. Right here, Brother Chris. Let's get some help right here if we might need some. God bless you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Here's another one getting saved. Who else? If you're here at the front and you're praying and you say, I want to be saved, would you just look to one of these pastors? They'll get someone to help you. I see many of you just kneeling where you're at. I, I, that's okay. Sit where you're at. But would you come? Christ is the answer. God bless you, sir. He, Christ is the answer. That's it. Come. Several coming for Christ today. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Kids, your only hope is Jesus Christ. We'll continue the invitation. I'd like that cameraman to come, if you will, put on the platform here. The moment we'll look up after prayer. I want to get a picture. God bless you, ladies. Coming to Christ. That's wonderful. Come on. That's it. God bless you right here. Thank you, ladies, soul winners. It's wonderful. Wonderful. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but we had 11 adults saved last Sunday. Walk this aisle in this church. That's such a thrill. And we have several today, many coming, many coming. Christ is the answer. A Bible open, and there's another Bible open. There's one right there. There's one. God bless you. Keep coming. Thank you, ladies. God bless you, girls. God bless you, ladies. Wonderful, wonderful. Our Father, I love these people so much. I, I'm so grateful for this journey together with them, this journey of life. Bless all the invitations right now. The other property, the Spanish service, as they're giving an invitation, the other ministries this hour, right now. And thank you for these dear people. God, somehow they had a desire to mortify their flesh and get out of bed and get ready and come to the house of God. I'm so thankful for them, just so grateful. I think what they could have done today, been on the mountains today, on the snow today, in the lakes and the and hiking, so many other things. And yet they chose to come and worship you. Bless their lives, we pray. Thank you for them. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Folks are still being dealt with here. God bless you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Bus workers, you can slip out, please, if you haven't yet. Not the bus kids. I want to take a picture with you. Father, thank you for your goodness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's remain standing. Nathan, can we get some good shots right here? Or Ethan, I'm sorry. Uh, can we get some good shots? Can we get those bus kids up there on the top? There? Look at that. Ah, I like that. We're over here on this side. And... Uh, Maybe, yeah, we're getting closer there. Look at that. God bless you, sweet kids. Keep going. Hey, kids, we love you. God bless you. Wow, I love those kids. They are so great. You know, I don't know if I'd had the character at your age to get out of bed and get on the bus, but you do every week. And uh, many more than this as well in other ministries. Uh, we're just a... Uh, Look at that. That's a beautiful picture. And get a picture of these old people down here, will you? See, I don't go to the dentist anymore. I got all false teeth. How many like that? No, don't raise your hand. But uh, wow, that is a beautiful. Keep taking a shot there. That's, that's a beautiful sight. And I'd like to, I kind of want to be a cameraman one time. You think I can? No, go ahead. You're doing better than I am. There we go. He's taking pictures there. Tonight, it's a six o'clock tonight. I'm, I've suspended for the last few weeks this series on joy. I want to speak to you about something that's helped me. Several months ago, just to reset something in my life that really has helped me. And I hope that it'll help you tonight. And uh, look at that. I love this place. I love you people. And I know we're going to be dismissed out to all doors. And we're not ready for baptism yet. We will be in a minute. But I'm going to go to this back door. And if you have time, to say hello, fine. If you don't understand, you're going to get, get the kids, get in the car, follow the police, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, traffic patrol out here. We'll only turn right. See, so why I want to go that way. Well, come to the stoplight, flip a U-turn and come around. 
but that's the way we do it right here. It'd be great. I want to pass your roll. I appreciate you coming. Thank you for your attentive spirit. God bless you. When I pass your roll, you'll be dismissed.